How's it going, everybody? Brian Albers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is March 5th, 2024. Figure 4 online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. we got a lot of news to get into here today, including, yes, he's back in the news, but this time it is just selling TKO stock. Vince McMahon is now $411 million richer and is Who's down to owning 8% it's... of the company. Yeah. It's, it's not richer. It's just he's got more cash. I mean, he had the stock, which was worth whatever. You know, I mean, he just decided to sell a lot of it, uh, you know, today. And he'll probably be selling a lot more of it as time goes by. It's pretty clear he's looking um, to divest himself, which makes sense. I mean, you can look at it two ways. I mean, it's like if you're at, at his age, if you're looking at life as if um, I just want to spend all my money, then you might as well sell your stock. If you're looking at it as, uh, I want to leave as much money to my kids or my grandparents, or my grandkids, I should say, then you would uh, go in there and you would make a valuation based on what you thought your stock would be worth. You know, is this going to be a growth company or not a growth company? If you thought it was going to be a growth company, you'd want to keep your stock. And he's got enough money that he doesn't need to, um, you know, I mean... He doesn't need cash. I mean, he just sold hundreds of millions worth of stock not all that long ago. And it's more money than he's ever going to be able to spend for the rest of his life. So it's one of two things. Either he doesn't care or he doesn't think it's going to be a growth company and that the stock is going to be going up uh, at a rate that he can't match uh, somewhere else, I guess. So it is a lack, you know, I mean, no matter how you slice it, it's a lack of confidence in the stock, or he just doesn't care at this point. And he may not care, you know, I mean, who, you know, and he may just, whatever. I mean, the rest of it, it's like, it's not like you're getting back at anyone by selling stock. Well, we've got uh, the first of what should be several more inductees into the WWE Hall of Fame. Of course, WrestleMania is in Philadelphia. They're going to be doing a ceremony, Wells Fargo Center after SmackDown on April 5th. And the first inductee for the 2024 class will be Paul Heyman going into the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah. So this is a trivia note, but this will be the first Hall of Fame class that was chosen by Paul Levesque and not chosen by Vince McMahon. So Paul Heyman is the first Paul Levesque Hall of Famer. Wow. So that's that's an interesting part of it. I mean, obviously the guy, you know, he's he's been offered the Hall of Fame before and turned it down with the idea that, um, you know, he's still active. He didn't think he should be in the Hall of Fame until his career is over. But uh, I think the idea of maybe being the first Paul Levesque inductee, um, and it's in Philadelphia where, you know, ECW was from, and one of his main career claims to fame is ECW, maybe his biggest in some ways. Um, so there's that. And, um, you know, uh, maybe they just needed a main eventer and he's the guy and they you know whatever i mean there's a lot of different reasons but i mean it's like he has been offered this before and uh, i mean you know as far as like is he deserving of course he is i mean there's a lot of people in the W hall of fame you can say are questionable and he ain't one of them i mean even if you throw out that ecw was not a financial success and whatever influence it had which was great actually if you really look back on the influence of ecw but if even if you throw all that out just his work as a manager second advocate whatever you want to call it, um, you know, is more than enough for anyone. I mean, you if you consider his longevity at the top, um, he started as a manager in this business in mid-'80s, and for the most part, in most places he was from that period on, when he was a manager, aside from that period when he was, uh, you know, running ECW and he wasn't, he was the top manager in – the area and and successful you know i mean whether it was you know memphis awa a little bit in wcw um and then obviously wwf for years and years and years um and you know i mean that, that longevity there's nobody who's had that kind of longevity at the top um not even close and uh so yeah i mean very very deserving and um very pivotal figure, really, in the last 25 years, 35 years of wrestling in a lot of ways. Um, creative, very influential, 
you know, a lot of the coaching stuff he does kind of doesn't really get noticed. And it's not a coincidence that, you know, Brock Lesnar was the top guy in the company when he was with him, and Roman Reigns was the top guy in the company when he's with them. And they wanted him with them, you know, because he's a good idea guy. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, he's been a great benefit to the Roman Reigns Act. Um, even bigger benefit, I think, to the Brock Lesnar Act. Any other names you've heard rumored? No, not at all. You heard any names? I mean, I've heard rumors of Haku. Oh, yeah, I've heard those rumors too, but yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. We've got uh, some AW notes, uh, but first, tomorrow's roadblock. We've got Carmelo Hayes, Tony D'Angelo for the number one contendership over WrestleMania weekend. Uh, the winner gets a shot of the NXT title. Kabuki Warriors versus Lyra and Tatum Paxley for the women's tag team titles. And on Raw, they noted that if the Kabuki Warriors win, they'll be facing Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler on Raw this coming week. We have got Baron Corbin, they're, Braun they're, Breaker. They're not. They're, they're not exactly going to lose on Tuesday. I'm thinking that's unlikely. Baron Corbin, and Braun Breaker versus Chase U for the NXT Tag Team Titles. Dijak versus Joe Gacy in an Asylum match, and Sean Spears will appear. And then and will wrestle. He what? And who? And will wrestle. So he will wrestle. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anything else for Dynamite on Wednesday besides the Kyle Fletcher Will Osprey match that may not be taking place? I don't know anything for Wednesday for Dynamite. No, no. Which is this may be a record. We're, it is a record. It is Monday, it, and we know Monday night one without match knowing that may not without happen. Knowing, without knowing any matches, I mean, yeah, we got one match that that could happen if Will Osprey is, um, you know, going to do it. You know, I mean, it's if he's cleared by Wednesday. Yeah, we've got a new uh, set. Great. We might have a big surprise because he's kind of hinted that uh, something big is going to happen on Wednesday. But, you know, it hasn't really been pushed that hard, though. I mean, it's been he mentioned it at a um, at the press call on Thursday of last week that there's going to be something big in Atlanta on Wednesday and then something big, you know, which we all know is Mercedes the next Wednesday. And, you know, they will they'll probably be announcing the um, maybe the tag team tournament brackets bracketing. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, certainly details of the tag team tournament will be announced on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. The update from the pay-per-view is that uh, Darby Allen needed 12 stitches. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's I crazy saw his back. Blood. I thought it was going to be 12,000 stitches, but he needed Well, you know, 12. the thing is, the thing is, is that most of the cuts were really small. He bled a lot. But, I mean, if you look like when the cuts first opened... You know, like at the very beginning, it was a lots, of, lots of little cuts, so they probably wouldn't even needed stitches. You know, and maybe a few of the bigger ones did. So, I, you know, by the time that match went for a little while, all that blood from those cuts was just all over the place. But it really wasn't like it wasn't like his back was slashed from top to bottom or something like that. You know, it was little cuts. So, it probably, you know, I mean, it obviously, it didn't need a lot of stitches. Not really a lot of other uh, fallout from the show yesterday. I guess we'll learn a lot more about very, a lot of things very, on Wednesday. Very well-received show. Um, one of the best-received shows, really. I mean, lots and lots of people uh, said that it was the best pay-per-view they'd ever seen. Um, I don't know if I would go that far, but, you know, like, again, I mean, it was a, it was an all-time great show. I would say that. I don't know if it's the best I've ever seen, but it was one of the best AEW shows I've ever seen. It was... Uh, um, you know, I mean, if you throw in all the different elements, there's you had a little bit of every kind of element. You had fantastic matches. You had, you know, strong debuts or, or, or first big matches like of Will Ospreay as a full-time member. And then you had the Sting retirement thing, which was, you know, one of those things that you can only do for someone of that caliber. And they don't come along very often. And um, most of them don't retire. I mean, most of them don't retire. They just sort of fade away and get injured. And so... Yeah, you know, um, it was uh, it was one of the all time uh, great shows. I mean, if I look at this compared to like, like I said last yesterday, yesterday last year's Revolution was voted Show of the Year, and I thought this show was better than that. Um, in ring uh, by a little, but overall show by you know consider- considerably, I would say. 
I mean, it was it's, it, to me, it was much easier to say like this show. Um, I mean, that show did have the Brian Danielson-MJF match, but this show had Osprey and Takeshi, which was every bit as good. And this the, the show last year didn't have anything at the level of um, the Sting retirement, you know, as far as something like that went. I mean, it was a pretty, uh, pretty big deal. And uh, no idea how it did, but uh, I mean, I'll have the, I'll I'll certainly have numbers by Wednesday of something, at least the television numbers. Um, you know, Tony Khan said it was one of the biggest, but didn't specify you know any kind of specific number. I think both Sting and the Young Bucks said the main event was one of their top three favorite matches they've ever had. So Sting said it was one of his top three. Nick Jackson said that it was his most fun match he ever had. And I think Matt said it was, um, you know, kind of like an all, you know, one of the most memorable matches he ever had. I don't know if he said, I don't know if he gave a number, but, you know, it was clearly up there. I mean, for those guys, as far as, and in, as far as their career goes, I think it's going to be, you know, when they look back over their career 30 years from now, um, I think that this will be um, certainly among the biggest matches they ever had, if not the biggest. In in some ways, in some ways, it may end up being the biggest. In other ways, you know, if you go through your whole career and different matches that have meant something, um, you know, whether it was, you know, the first All In or you know the match with Omega and Page or whatever. You know, there's different kinds of great matches, but as far as like a really really monumental match for them i mean they got picked for this match you know this is like this wasn't like just some angle that went together they got picked by sting to do sting's last match and then they their part in pulling it off and darby's part in pulling it off um just incredible by by everyone concerned as far as that type of a match they did a, a great great job they hit a home run so um you know, it had it. It should be very, very satisfying to all four of them. The New Japan Cup is starting today, and uh, four a.m. Four a.m. We've got uh, a full bracket here: Sonata, Goto, Evil, and Zack Saber Jr. All getting buys here in the first round, and then the entire first round has Yoshihashi versus Kenta. Jack Perry makes his debut versus Shota Umino. Toriano versus Yujiro. That, that, yeah, the Jack Perry match is uh, on tomorrow's show. TJP versus David Finley. Tangaloa versus the Great Okan. And Ishii versus Chase Owens is the first half of the bracket. And then for the second half, we got Hikaleo and Oleg Bolton. Shingo versus Yuya Uemura. Colm Newman versus Gabe Kidd. Yoda Suji versus Jeff Cobb. Phantasmo versus Mikey Nichols. And Taichi versus Ren Narita. Yeah, so tomorrow is the 52nd anniversary show, which they run every March 6th at the Oto Ward Gym because it's the anniversary of the 1972 first show of New Japan Pro Wrestling with the Antonio Inoki against Carl Gotch main event, which also was the symbol of a theory of Japanese wrestling in the sense that Inoki had not wrestled since December, which actually isn't that long. He'd wrestled from not... For today, you know, back then, that was, like, considered... The story in that match, basically, is Inoki quit the JWA in December when um, there was a match, and I think it was in Osaka, but it was supposed to be Dory Funk Jr. against Antonio Inoki for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And they, they had found out that Inoki and the referee were going to conspire to beat Dory Funk Jr. and take the championship. And then he was going to quit the JWA and be the, you know, embarrassed everything. It had been a total cluster for the NWA to have that happen. Um, but the plot was found out ahead of time, so it didn't happen. So Inoki was kicked out, started his own company, um, and, you know, with at that point in time, with the nature of the NWA being what it was, um, they were not going to allow him to have any talent. Now, a couple of years later, they did. You know, he worked with Vince McMahon, the father, and he worked with uh, Eddie Graham, Mike LaBelle. Um, so he was getting, you know, American talent. But at first, he could not get a lot of 
American talent. So he had, uh, you know, kind of outlaw guys and, and, you know, European guys. And Carl Gotch, you know, who was the trainer for JWA, came aboard as a wrestler. And um, they had a match. And everybody figured the first show of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Antonio Inoki against Carl Gotch, that Antonio Inoki would win. And the idea was that because Inoki had not wrestled since December and it was March, that he was rusty and Carl Gotch won. And that became one of the, um, you know, things of Japanese wrestling, that if you don't wrestle for a long period of time, you're rusty and you don't come back and you don't win your first match back, uh, especially, you know, when you're facing the likes of a Carl Gotch. So, um, and that became like, in the early days of New Japan, that became like a big match. I think they did about five or six singles matches for real world championship i think is what they called it at the time so so tomorrow's show um it's uh jeff cobb and the great O'Con against tang tangaloa and um uh tomoaki hanma which is uh a weird team uh phantasmo and hikaleo against zack saber jr and mikey nichols very interesting and i don't know what the story is that that shane haste is not on this tour um because he did very well, you know, um, in the G1. You know, he even beat Naito in the G1. Um, Tanahashi is listed, but he ain't going to be ready because he's got the ankle injury. So it'll be somebody teaming with Ishii and Hiroki Goto and Desperado against Shingo Takagi, Yoda Suji, Hiromu Takahashi, and Bushi. And then uh, Francisco Akira and TJP and Cal Newman against David Finley. Ghetto, and uh, who was the third person there? Is it Gabriel Kidd? No, um, Gabriel Kidd. And then uh, Sonata Taichi, Yuyu Imura, and Doki against Evil, Ren Narita, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Dick Togo. And then we got the cup matches, uh, Yoda Suji and Yujiro, which, or Toriyano and Yujiro, which sounds bad. Yoshihashi against Kenta, which could be okay, but doesn't certainly sound all that enticing. Jack Perry and Shota Umino, which is Jack Perry's first match since since uh, London months ago. So he should be having a lot of ring rust. And uh, But he's probably going to win, because I don't think they're bringing him in to lose to Shota Umino in his first match. And then uh, main event is IWGP champion against junior champion Tetsuya Naito and Sho. There's been a lot of times where the people have really been looking forward to an IWGP champion against junior champion match at the anniversary show, and I believe this is not one of them. And then uh, Wednesday, um, they're going to be at Corken Hall with the Ishii Chase Owens match, Tangaloa, Great Okan, and um, uh, TJP and David Finley, which is interesting because they had a hell of a match in San Jose. And... Um, I wonder if TJP will get an upset just because David Finley beat him in San Jose. And then Thursday is the old Bolton, Hikaleo, Calum Newman, Gabe Kidd, which the Calum Newman, Gabe Kidd may be one of the best matches of the first round. And uh, Shingo Takagi against Yuyo Imura, which should also be one of the best matches of the first round. And then uh, they're coming back on the 10th with the other first round with Phantasmo and Mikey Nichols and uh, Taichi and Ren Narita and Yoda Suji and Jeff Cobb, which is another strong match. All right, well, before we get into the Raw show here, let's go through these ratings, including a somewhat surprising SmackDown number, given The Rock was on the show for 40 minutes. Well, he was on for 40 minutes. He was on for about 25, but, yeah. The, um, <coughs> excuse me, Rampage, Roman Reigns was on for, like, <coughs> 40 minutes, and so was Paul Heyman. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Rampage did 344,000 viewers in 0.10. I mean, it's just what Rampage has been doing. It's actually a little lower than Rampage has been doing, but the main event was also Magnus against Matt Seidel. So it didn't like, you know, it's... But that is the main event, and uh, that's probably what you're going to get. And um, it was number 25 for the night. It was fifth in the time slot. It's a number. The, um, you know, it declined the, uh, the first quarter... With Claudio Castanoli and Ruhito, um, actually did fairly well, um, and then it 
it fell from there. Actually, it did, it did all right. Um, SmackDown, 2,348,000 viewers and 0.64. Yeah, certainly way lower than I think anyone would have expected. And I think the lesson on this is that um, if you look at the quarters, the quarters with Dwayne Johnson, um, the first quarter he was out did 2.58 million viewers and 937,000 18 to 49, which is huge. His end of his interview was up at 2,750,000 viewers and 992,000 18 to 49. So his segments did great. And then it dropped hard. Once people figured that he was done, they were about 2.2 million the rest of the show. So the lesson, loud and clear here, is that if you got Rock on the show and you put him on first, he'll give you a great quarter and ain't going to carry for the rest of the show. If you put him on last, people will wait to see him. So we'll see what they do this week. But um, this message was loud and clear because, yeah, this was a very disappointing final number, but in the quarters when the guy was out there, the numbers were, were quite strong. So there you go. All right, the uh, Raw show for Monday was uh, it was kind of there. I mean, there, yeah, was, it there were a couple really, of good matches, but there was nothing that really... Didn't do much for me. I mean, actually, the most notable thing, which is actually funny when you think about it. Well, the Intercontinental thing, I think, was the biggest news. So, well, before that, it opens up with Cody coming down to the ring, and he and Seth talk coincidentally for 23 minutes, during which they make fun of Rock for doing a 21-minute promo. They yeah. talk about how long his 21-minute promo was. And at the end of the day, they talk for 23 minutes. And the irony is that Rock said way more in his 21-minute promo than they said in their 23-minute promo because the whole point of their promo is, they well, we're going to be there on Friday to tell you what we're going to do at WrestleMania. He said he's Rock said about five times as much. Now Rock didn't say much in his in his Friday promo though. Well, Friday no, night. but he said the, the most Friday important night. thing, which is I want you guys in a tag match. Yeah. Well, and they said the most important thing, which is that we're coming on Friday. And yeah, but they didn't answer. even answer the question here. Well, they're going to show up. Twenty three minutes, and you can even say, "Yeah, we're going to face a guy." I should note that when Cody first came out, he said, "And I quote: I am unable to talk about Roman Reigns because of a distraction." A distraction that stings quite a bit. Of course, I'm talking about The Rock. And then in the opening match on the show... Well, that may not be stings because if you remember when Dwayne did his promo, the big line, this was the um, the Twitter promo, he said that he called Cody up and Cody agreed to step aside. But when he agreed to step aside for business reasons, you know, he goes, I called up Cody and told him, like, this is going to be the biggest WrestleMania of all time. And, you know, we're all about business. You know, you're about business. I'm about business. We grew up in the business the whole bit, right? So you always do what's right for the business. The right thing in the business is to step aside. This is Rock's storyline. And uh, he said that Cody said that it stings him to do it. So it may not really be a reference to Sting, even though Michael Cole did bring up Sting. Well, yes, yeah. Michael Cole made a direct reference to Sting. And this yeah. was funny because... He said, just want to wish Sting the best in his retirement, great career. And then Pat McAfee actually said, it was an awesome match last night. And man, you never saw Michael Cole run that guy over so fast. He cut him off and he started talking about this match. He did not want Pat talking about what a great match Sting had last night. So that was funny. Yeah, I think um, obviously, you know, I mean, this was... A Paul Levesque move, you know, I mean, it's not like Michael Cole did this one just out of the niceness of his heart, because you would never do that. I mean, it was like you're told, like, put that thing, you know, like, acknowledge Sting, essentially. And, um, you know, McAfee is, I, you know, I don't know if McAfee knows all the WWE rules or something. But, well, you don't know that the, rule. But but that that also the rules have changed, so I don't even know what all the WWE rules are. You know, because well, based on Michael Cole's reaction, I think that was breaking a rule to acknowledge that you watched a great show the night before that you can buy right now. By the way, yeah, that's true. That's Although true. you may not be able to buy it, it's BR Live, but yeah, but I mean, I think I think that the whole thing is is that um, you know, I mean, it could be just want to congratulate the guy. You know, I mean, it's he is big big name and uh, kind of show that you're not petty like. Obviously, under Vince, was would this happen? It never did. 
ever. So, well, other than um, when uh, in the middle of the Monday Night Wars, when he would like do the uh, made fun of the uh, Hogan and um, Roddy Piper match, remember Age in a Cage? So they did acknowledge, um, um, you know, WCW. Or when um, they acknowledged UFC, by, they used to do this with boxing. Actually, the, like the Monday after like a Tyson fight and they would go in there and they would go about how, um, you know, oh the fight is only like, you know, two minutes long and you paid 40 bucks for a two minute fight. That would never happen in with WWE, that type of a thing. They did, you, you know, when when they considered people with Vince, you know, whether it was and it was not just WCW, but boxing as well, um, pay-per-view competition, UFC, they did too on two different occasions. You know, where they ripped on UFC for the fact in, in one case that you, you know, you don't know. The match could end in two minutes. You know, um, that had never happened with us. So um, they did used to do, you know, it was not a regular thing, but, you know, Vince could be incredibly petty. Well, uh, the other note from the Seth and, and, uh, and Cody promo was it, man, Seth tried to get over Diarrhea Dwayne. What a bad! But that's not oh. him. That's 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 the um, the writers. Well, obviously, it's not him, but his the, character. If his character wasn't a geek already, oh my god! And but Rock's that was going to have a field day with that. Yeah, but the thing that was, whoever wrote that, and whoever didn't, as soon as that thing came out, go, this is going to bury Seth for saying, it, and it's so tacky, and how it got through all the channels. That's that was a. As soon as he said that, it's like, oh, God, this is like Vince crap, you know? I don't know why. They thought, obviously, somebody thought it was funny, and, um, you know, whatever. We'll see. But, yeah, yeah, Seth was, it's, that's, it's not going to be good for Seth. So, anyway, the first match was Gunther and Dirty Dom for the Intercontinental title. It was a very good match. And wasn't, it, wasn't it a non-title? Uh well, remember, so. Dom was going like this afterwards with the Judgment Day. Like, he demanded a title shot. They didn't announce it for the title, I don't think. I mean, he was, he was, whatever. Anyway, the point is, he lost. It's not like it mattered. Yeah. But uh, Gunther worked as a total babyface here and just beat the hell out of Dom. JD kept trying to distract. And finally, at the end, uh, there was one great near fall where Gunther tried to powerbomb, and Dom turned into a sunset flip, like a sunset flip powerbomb, and it was a late kick out, and this crowd went nuts for that spot. And then uh, Dom missed a splash, Gunther hit the shotgun drop kick, and then, uh, I don't know, people really want to remember things that Chris Benoit did, but uh, there was a Nitro in 1995, and he gave Eddie Guerrero a powerbomb on that show, and it was the craziest powerbomb you ever saw, and I'm pretty sure that they tried to recreate that here with Gunther and Dominic because, man, he lifted this guy and he held him and he powerbombed him, put him in the crab and submitted him, and the place went nuts. And uh, it's Gunther could be a hell of a baby face someday. Yeah, yeah. The um, That that spot, actually, the um, Chris Benoit did a powerbomb when I was in Japan to Eddie Guerrero. That was the sickest power bomb I have ever heard in my life. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Um, this match, I mean, the one thing, I mean, this is a really fun match, but the one thing I know, you know, got a note because it's so preposterous was, I mean, I had to watch it back because I, it was, it was like, wait a minute, did he really do this? So he goes all out, all out chopping that post, right? When uh, when uh, I think it was JD missed, JD moved. He was actually going yes. for JD, and then Dominic slams his hand into the post. So his hand goes into the post twice, and got, the rest of the match is essentially almost everything Gunther does is just chop the fucking hell out of him as hard as he could with no, like no, like the idea like he wasn't hurt at all. Like it's like so whatever you know. It's like it, and it was like. I mean, he did not do a chop for about 20 seconds, but the rest of the match, all he was doing was chops. With the same hand, I thought, you know, he's going to probably switch hands. It's like, nope, nothing. Not, you know, not wincing when he's throwing the chops, not fighting through the pain when he's throwing the chops, not taking something off of the chops, like, oh, he doesn't have the power in the chops. Nope. I thought, that is, uh, 
It is what it is. I mean, it's not the first time he's done that. But I do know that when he was in PWG and he did the same thing, um, he actually did, like, sell it. Um, you know, and it made a difference in the match. Uh, this one, it was just like, I don't know, you know. I mean, it, whatever. It's, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not any big deal. It's not like that doesn't happen elsewhere. But uh, it was just very, very quick recovery. I'll just say that. Like, it's one thing, like, if it's a few minutes later. This was right away, and he's just back throwing those throwing those ridiculous chops at the poor guy. So there you go. Damage control showed up, and Pierce said, what are you guys doing here? And Dakota says, well, we're the tag team champs. We can go anywhere. It's how it's always been. And Pierce says, well, I know that. But, like, why are you here? And Dakota said, well, we're going to scout Zoe and Shayna. You can trust us. And then Nakamura showed up and said he wanted to talk about the Intercontinental title. Pierce said I'll have an announcement later tonight. We had Shayna and Zoe versus Caden Katana, damage control and commentary. There was a lot of sloppiness in this match. Yeah, not not Almost all by Katana, actually. Did a diving hurricane run and Shayna didn't look good. Did a 450, well, her, didn't her, look her, good. Her, 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 and, her and Shayna were, you know, they were doing a lot of movement, and they were not uh, in sync. So Shayna broke it up. She started choking Caden. Katana tried to make the save, but got rolled up and pinned. And then they vanished because the Kabuki Warriors got in the ring. And Kabuki Warriors challenged them to a tag title match next week. Vowed to send them both crying, just like we did to Bailey. And Shayna says, well, it's about time. We'll see you next week. So that's announced for Raw. Mm. Judgment Day's meeting with Dom. And Priest says, we're going to go make things right with Imperium. JD, you're going to make things right with Gunther. JD's like, I am. And then Dom, uh, Andrade walks into the room and says something, and then he leaves, and Dom says, guys, keep an eye on him. He might be important at some point. So something's going on with Dom and... Andrade. Well, they want to do something where, like, Dom wants to recruit him or something. Well, we had Nia and Becky. Went good. No. No. I talked about Nia on that Australia show, and uh, this was another bad night. There was a spot where Becky hit a drop kick off the middle rope. Oh, my God. That's selling? And Nia it's... sold it so badly that the, that the announcers literally thought that Becky had missed. Yeah. But she hadn't. Well, the thing was, is like, she hits it, and Nia just stands there. Just stands there. Just stands there. And then, she, then, like, seconds later, after just standing there, she's then, then she, like, runs out of the ring like she Stumbles she's back it. and falls through the ropes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Was, yeah. And so, she had a middle rope leg drop for a near fall. That looked devastating as hell, by the way. Becky had a molly go round, but Nia was well, too far out, well, so it didn't well, look good. Well, she, did, she didn't hit it. She tried it. And then finally, at the end, uh, Becky goes for the uh, disarmer and then a straight arm bar, but Nia rolls outside, slams Becky into the barricade, and then Liv Morgan appears, flying for him off the barricade, sends Nia to the post, DQ, horrible finish, and then Liv gets well, in the ring and they're, says... They're, they're, they're building something up, so... But, and yeah, obviously match they're, next week. Yeah, and they're obviously trying to protect Nia, you know? So I, I think the idea is going to be that, uh, you know, Nia still challenging for whoever the winner of the title match is and they're not going to beat her you know that becky isn't going to beat her i don't think until until after wrestlemania god well, i can't wait for that Let me i tell can. you i don't need to see this match again did nothing to make me want to see this match again no oh and then they have this post-match brawl speaking of of Nia. oh yeah 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 and, and nile does lays them both out well worse she she they're yelling at each other naya grabs them both and so Nia lifts up Becky onto her shoulders, and she's supposed to just go backwards and, like, just slam Becky into the... the... But she just threw her. Yeah, she just tossed her. Becky comes nowhere near the post, crashed on the ground. I was like, God, can we end this experiment already? It's time to move on to somebody else, because someone's going to get hurt at this point. Yeah. And then Becky and Liv had an argument backstage... And they well, agreed but, to but fight she, next she, week. She also, she also took out uh, Liv Morgan, too. Yeah. So it's like Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch are wrestling next week, but Nia Jax took them both out this week. Yeah. E- even though, like, the, at worst, it should be a three-way. Although the way it was booked, it should be a freaking handicap match. Well, you know what this means, by the way? We have more matches announced for next week's Raw than Dynamite on Wednesday. 
Yeah. They only, you only need one to do that, or two. By the way, Dynamite Wednesday, I think they got 3,000 tickets out. This is a Dynamite Collision and Rampage taping? No, 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 no. They're taping Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. It's it's Dynamite and uh, Rampage on Wednesday and then Collision and ROH on Thursday, I believe. All right. Yeah. Ricochet met with Pierce, and he wants a title shot. Pierce told him, well, you know, I got a, I got a plan here. And then uh, Priest showed up, and he said J.D. wanted Gunther. And Pierce told him, all right, well, uh, make your pitch. And so... <laughs> J.D. starts making his pitch, and they went right to commercial break in the middle of his pitch. So must not have been much of a pitch. Mm -hmm. So then Pierce makes his announcement. It's funny because, like, throughout the show, he's he's saying, you know, I'll I'll, I'll, I got an announcement coming. Pay attention. You know, give me your speech, whatever. So they go to the break and they come back, and it's like this very professionally produced, pre-taped announcement with. Like a big video montage. It's like, wow, they did that in four minutes during the commercial break? He was just listening to JD. So the announcement is that finding a worthy challenger is, in fact, a challenge. Therefore, next week on Raw, we have three matches for Raw. It is Sammy, Ricochet, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bronson Reed, JD, and Chad Gable in a gauntlet match. So we're gonna get. That's actually gonna be five matches all by itself. Yep, and he emphasized one winner. Yeah, to face so, Gunther. So, so there's gonna be five matches that'll probably take like forty five minutes, maybe more. Yeah, it might be some good stuff. The interesting thing is, if you remember last week when they were building this up, two of the key guys they were building up for this were the Miz and our Truth, and they were nowhere to be seen. So. Actually, this, they were to, they were to be seen. They were backstage in a segment playing video games, but they are not part of this match. Yeah, so I think that the deal must have been that you know they, you know that they were going to go with them, and then they just decided that uh, whatever they're going to do, they want better wrestlers, you know, um, because you could see like they loaded it up with, I mean Ricochet who hasn't even been around, JD who came from nowhere, and you know JD, you know he hasn't really shown it, but JD is actually a a great worker, and J.D. And, and Gunther had fantastic matches in Europe years and years ago. So um, really, I mean, like, really freaking, like, almost match of the year level matches. So, I mean, those guys can work together great. Ricochet and Gunther, of course, have had fantastic matches in Europe as well. And um, Chad Gable, you know, great, you know, no matter what. And, and him and Gunther had, had some great matches at house shows and, and on TV. And then um, Sami Zayn, great worker, you know. So, I mean, it, it's like they've – Bronson Reed, you know, big power guy. I mean, they loaded this thing up to where next week there should be some great in-ring action. And, um, you know, I mean, I figure it's got to be Zayn or um, the only other choice is Gable. You know, I don't think any of the other ones can win. But we'll see. We had Andrade versus Apollo Crews, and not really any heat until Andrade did the Three Amigos, and then he hit the Hammerlock DDT, which they're calling the Los Sombra, and got the pin. And he got a good reaction by the end, worked as a total baby face. And that was that. Yeah. Sammy Zayn interview about trying to get his road to WrestleMania, and then Valhalla and Ivar show up, and... Valhalla basically says, why is a loser like you in this match? A battle-tested warrior like Ivar was not. And so Sammy challenged him to a match. Ivar said, great, and you're not even going to make it to next week. Shouldn't they have at least done this match where the winner would get into next week's match? Could have done that, yeah. Yeah, Could have they... made that the stip. Yep. Well, then we had uh, a segment with all the women backstage. This was like an NXT segment where... It was just, like, way too much stuff going on. But basically, Naya Sarca- or Natty sarcastically apologized to Tegan, said they got to get on the same page. Candice is apparently turning heel. She wants Indy to cheat to start winning matches. She then sees Maxine and just buries her and then storms off. So we're doing something with a multi-woman segment. Imperium and Judgment Day had a very, very good match. And went through a couple of breaks. And I don't have an update. I tried to get an update on this, but I didn't. 
But at the very end of the match, Kaiser gets bumped outside, and he landed weird. Like, he landed with a straight leg, and it looked like he injured his knee. And he still caught Finn on a dive, but then he was holding his knee again. And it, even, it wasn't like a, a spot where you would think someone would hurt their knee. He may have just done a great job selling, but I was kind of worried when it was over. Priest hit the south of heaven on Vinci, got the pin, and uh, hopefully Kaiser's all right. But it was a good match. Yeah, it was, it was fine. Drew cut a promo on the bloodline, vowed to beat Jey Uso later. And then we had Ivar and Sami Zayn, which, as you would expect... This is a pretty good match. Very good match, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good match. Both guys are great. A lot of good near falls. And finally, Sammy gave him an explorer in the corner, tried the kick, but Ivar squashed him with a sit-down splash. Went up top for the doom salt. Missed, got kicked and pinned. But then immediately afterwards, Bronson jumped Sammy, crushed him with the tsunami, and they'll all be in that gauntlet match next week. We had Chad Gable walking up to Gunther. So I think, I think that Sammy's winning the gauntlet and he will face Gunther. But they've been pushing this Chad Gable thing pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And not only are they pushing it, but he actually has a catchphrase for the match, which is, it just means more. He said it last week. He said it this week. And the fact that it's been branded now for a couple of weeks does make me think it's possible that he's getting a shot against Gunther. I, I think it's possible, too. And they're building it up as, you know, Gunther versus Chad Gable. It just means more because his family's involved. Then the main event was Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso. And the match was good, but this was another one of those main events where it's two stars, no title on the line. It's not for a title shot. There's no stips. There's, like, nothing attached to it. It's just... That's your main event. And they wrestled for a long time. And then Solo came through the crowd. And he distracted Jay and Drew hit the future shock, but he kicked out. And then Cody's music hits. He comes down and beats up Solo. And then Jimmy comes through the crowd, distracts Jay again. And Jay eats the Claymore and gets pinned. So then Jimmy goes after Jay. Seth runs down to make the save. He gets hit with a Claymore, which was the first bump he's taken since he got cleared. He announced in the opening segment he is cleared, so he's good to wrestle whenever. And he took this huge bump for the Claymore, and then Drew screamed at him to ignore the bloodline, stay focused, do the right thing. Fans chanted CM Punk at Drew, and boom, show went off the air. So it looked kind of rushed there in the last minute, but they got everything in. Slowly yeah, building... I mean Norm, you know, normal stuff. Um, you know, the thing was, this is the second week in a row that, like, Raw has been three hours, and we've actually added nothing to WrestleMania. We've, the Intercontinental. We've gotten, the Intercontinental. No, we don't know yet. No, this, but I mean, this was sick. about setting up a match for next week so yeah. that we can find out what we're doing at WrestleMania. Well, well, well we still got... We still got several weeks. Well, we do, but I mean... But, but you're right. You know what? It's if two nights like, of WrestleMania. I think we got four matches. Um, as far as officially like official, um, one, two, three, four, five at least. Five. We have five official. Yeah. Seth and Drew, Roman and Cody, EO mm -hmm. and Bailey, Rhea and Becky, and the tag, and the uh, well, that's not even official yet. Yeah, but we know. I it. mean, it's going to happen, but it's not official yet. Yeah, yeah. Because this show was about telling us to watch Friday to find out if it's official. Yeah, and, and then we'll the, inter the Intercontinental, whatever the Gauntlet match is. Yeah, the winner and, versus Gunther. Uh, J Jimmy against Jay. Not official. Not official yet, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're still in the big pro process of building it. And uh, from there, you know, there's not even really a lot. Because I thought that um, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark were probably going to get the tag title shot. And obviously that's on Monday. So maybe they're going to do, you know, you know, they'll probably end up doing like some like multiple women's tag team matches to get everyone in the card, you know, like Natty and Tegan. Well, Fox I mean, that's what it seemed like when they did that women's segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like throw everyone out there. Yeah. So that is the uh, that's the Raw show, everybody, and that's actually going to wrap it up for today. Dave and I were up yesterday, and uh, tons of discussion on the AW pay per view, and we'll be back on Wednesday talking dynamite. And uh, any matches announced, we'll put them up on the front page, of course. And uh, there's a new Observer. There's a back issue of the Observer. There's 
a bunch of shows this weekend, including the show with Lance on Friday. And uh, Lance will be on Observer Live on Tuesday, so you can check that out. And uh, that's it, everybody. We'll talk to you again after a while.